Hey everyone, Andrew Chalman here with another machine quick tip, this time working in the software. In this video, I want to go ahead and talk about the Preferences menu. So let's go ahead and go to File, and then go down to Preferences. And I just want to go through these different tabs and talk about some of the different options we have here. And not only say what they actually do, but also just show you that they're there, because there's some really cool things that we can work with here. And it's just helpful to know that you can easily get to those through that menu. Um, so let's go ahead and just run through these. Um, general, we have some options for loading and recording. Um, you can toggle these on and off. Um, we also have some cool things to do with the metronome. Now this is neat because this is actually going to be the same sort of options that we have from the record mode menu that I talked about in an earlier video. Uh, so if you want to know what these actually do, you can go ahead and watch that video. Um, but it's just it's just cool to know that they're here as well. So you can change the metronome, you can change it um, to sync it with recording, the volume of the metronome, your time signature, and your recording count and length. Um, so lots of options there, and uh, it's just, if you're not working on the hardware, you can go ahead and get to the same things from the software. And you also have your uh, automatic quantization option here. Um, so again, I talked about it in the other video, um, but just know that it is there as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the default tab. This is where we have some options to change um, sort of the default settings for a machine. So you have your metronome settings here. You can change the actual sample, the actual sound that your metronome plays. Um, so if you don't like the sound of the machine, the stock metronome, go ahead and change that. Um, you can actually find the, the samples for different different like famous metronome sounds, so like Pro Tools, you can find the click tracks online, download those samples, and then load them up here. Uh, so if you want to switch that, that's possible. You also have a default pattern length option here, and this will be when you record but you don't create a pattern first, so it's sort of the automatic pattern that machine will create for you and you can change the default length. So I actually want to change this now. I'll change this up to uh, two bars long. I find that's one I use a lot, so I'll go ahead and change that. Um, we also have some options for template projects. Um, go ahead and mess with those, although I haven't done that here. Now go ahead and moving on to the library tab. We have some options for factory and user content. Um, so factory, this is where you're going to find all of the different um, the different native instruments plugins here. And you can, uh, you can see that I have all my contact things here, all my complete plugins as well. So um, lots of things there. And you also have your options for user library here. So this is where you'll find your, your files and your folders for uh, third-party sample packs. So I have some, some performance kits that I created here and some other drums here. And those are just going to show up there. Um, it's also important to note that we have a rescan button here. And that'll just go through these folders and look for more content. Now moving on to plugins. This is where your plugins will show up, obviously. And you have some options to sort of hide them by unchecking these boxes. And you also have a locations tab here where a machine will look for new plugins. Um, so I put all my plugins in these fo two folders here and machine will automatically look for those every time it starts up. And you can also rescan these here. Um, so moving on to the coolest tab, I think the hardware options here. Um, depending on what controller you have, these will change. But um, for my machine mark two, I have these options here. A lot of people ask me if you can change the pad sensitivity. And this is where you're going to be doing that. I'm going to go ahead and you can change this. And you can also change um, the scaling option here. And this is going to change um, the sort of the way machine correlates your velocity into, um, into your pad touch. Or actually, the other way around. It correlates your pad touch into velocity. Um, so if you change this to, um, I think if you change it to hard, it's going to um, sort of lower your velocity on average. It's going to make you have to hit the pad harder for it to get the same velocity. But I'm not sure about that, but just go ahead and play with these and find one that you like. And you also have options to change the brightness of your screens, as well as contrast for each one. And then finally, we have our colors tab here. Um, this is going to be where you can change the sort of default color schemes that machine uses. So right now I have my scenes on white. That's going to make all of my scenes a white color on the machine hardware. Um, you can change this to auto. And what that will do is, is kind of go through this sort of spectrum of colors. So as you create more scenes, it's going to change their colors instead of just keeping them white. Um, sort of the same thing that groups do by default. So you notice when you create more groups, it's going to automatically change their color. Um, so you can apply that same color setting to different scenes as well as different sounds. So options there. Um, and I have this set on our group color here. Um, but you can change that to whatever you like. And finally, we have our load with colors check mark box here. And that's just going to uh, tell machine to either load with colors Say if someone uh, saved a kit with different colors saved, um, this option will make sure that machine will load those colors back up. So I hope this video is helpful. As always, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.